Well, a special word of grace and peace to you on this Reformation Sunday from God, our Creator, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Does anybody know how many years it's been since the Reformation? 507, yeah, 1517, do the math, yeah, yeah, yeah. 507 years since Martin Luther wrote down 95 what he were thought were going to be talking points to be discussed by church leaders, mostly around indulgences, started an unintended reformation of the church. But why do we celebrate it every year? Why is it important for us in 2024 in Dallas, Texas, to celebrate Reformation Sunday? What's the significance? As I was pondering that this week, I found an inspiration to answer this question in an unexpected place. I was walking through a bookstore in Waco, Texas, where my husband and I live, earlier this week, and I came down an aisle that said, healthy cooking. And there were cookbooks there that you would expect, like how to incorporate more vegetables into your diet and things like that. But the unexpected book there was Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child, who she herself has said, I despise all health food. (laughs) And so as I was preparing to preach on this Reformation Sunday, I kept coming back to the person of Julia Child because who she is and her story can help us actually answer that question of the significance of the Reformation to us today. So Julia Child is often hailed as the woman who introduced French cuisine to American households. Yet when you dive into her story, you find that it wasn't just her love for French food that made her famous, but her approach to teaching it. Julia wasn't always a chef. She actually found her passion for cooking later in life when she moved to France with her husband. She joined the Cordon Bleu and faced many challenges while she was there, and she didn't initially have the finesse of a seasoned chef. But it was her struggles that made her teachings approachable. When Julia eventually co-wrote that iconic book, The Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and starred in her own cooking show, The French Chef, She took a back-to-basics approach to cooking. She broke down complicated French dishes into simple steps, making sure that anyone could follow along. She wasn't afraid to make mistakes on air, and she tackled them with humor and grace. In a world where French cuisine was seen as something as highbrow and intimidating, Julia Child made it accessible by emphasizing the basics. Julia's methods were clear. Use fresh ingredients, understand the basic techniques, and don't be afraid to try. So for this Reformation Sunday in 2024, let's get back to the basics. Use fresh ingredients, understand basic techniques, and don't be afraid to try. Fresh ingredients. For the purpose of this metaphor, let's look at us the people of God, saints and sinners here at Christ Lutheran Church in Dallas, the people who make up the church as the ingredients. We are all part of this grand recipe. We come together with different gifts, different perspectives, different ideas of how we worship and pray and learn. We discern and volunteer and serve and create together. And our outcome as the church may not be a famous Coco Vaughn, but here at Christ Lutheran in Dallas, it is a vibrant, Christ-focused community that lives out the calling to be spiritually nourished and reaches out to change the lives of people in need. Understanding basic techniques. Our continued commemoration of the Reformation, even 507 years later, is more than about one moment in history, or even Martin Luther as an individual. Instead, we lift up this Sunday to remind ourselves that the church is always reforming. It's not that the church was broken and Martin Luther fixed it. No. The basic message of Reformation Sunday is that sin and brokenness are ongoing realities of the human experience. 
And God, God is the only one who can fix it. God has fixed it in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. This is the basic twofold truth that Jesus talks about in John's gospel today. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. One truth is that we are enslaved to sin and cannot free ourselves. We are curved inward by sin, looking to our own comfort and privileges of self-preservation above all else. We fail to love one another, fail to see others as beloved and made in God's image. We fail to tend to our relationships with God and one another. It may feel like freedom to be in charge of our own destiny, but the reality is that we will never be good enough or holy enough on our own. We cannot earn or deserve or work our way into salvation. And after saying that, the second basic truth is this. We belong to God. In the waters of baptism, in the waters of baptism, we are called children of God, claimed as God's own, for, God's own forever. God's promises are faithful and sure. Resting in these promises, we are freed for life that really is life, a life shaped by forgiveness, gratitude, service, and love. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we are strengthened and empowered to live out these baptismal promises. So two things are true. We are bound by sin and brokenness in spite of, or sometimes even because of, our best efforts to free ourselves. And we belong to God, by whose grace we are made free. These truths are at the heart of our Lutheran faith and identity. It is these truths that Martin Luther lifted up in his call for reformation. And these are the fundamental truths that we lift up today. Our basic technique in living a Christian life isn't about our knife skills or being able to make the perfect sauce, but rather trusting and leaning into the promises that we die to sin and rise in Christ every single day, free to love God and our neighbor. Don't be afraid to try. When my husband and I first moved to Texas just over five years ago, I had barely started my call in Waco when the, when the world was turned upside down by the pandemic. And there's still so much to process about that time. But think of the ways the church learned and adapted and tried new things. I'm sure you were becoming creative in your ministries here, whether it was getting online and getting services running, finding ways to create community online, and becoming intentional in the ways that we receive the Holy Sacraments. If the Reformation teaches us anything, it's not being, able to, it's not being, not being afraid to try something new. Martin Luther didn't want to start a new church. He just wanted to do something new within it. Within the life of the church, sometimes there's pressure to try the next extravagant or big thing in order to stay relevant. Did you all hear that news story from a few years back about a mega church that gave everyone iPads on Easter? <laughs> I'm not making this up. <laughs> I promise, this is not the way to foster genuine Christian community. But every time we try something new, every time as Christ Lutheran Church in Dallas, we try something new, we grow as a community. The church continues to reform because it leans into the basics of grace, knowing that it won't always be perfect and that we all may not like it, but when we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and discern where God is calling us, where God is calling you, Christ Lutheran Dallas, where God is calling you to serve in 2024. In a world where there are so many voices, so much noise. Reformation Day gives us an opportunity to thank God and stay firm in God's promises. In a world that is bound by sin and death, we give thanks for a God who sets us free to love God and our neighbor. Perhaps we can use Julia's story 
as a reminder to use the gifts of the Reformation as fundamental as they are. Use fresh ingredients. That's you and that's me. Some of us may be more fresh than others, but we all have gifts to serve the church, no matter what. No matter what. We understand basic techniques, that we are saved by grace through faith each and every day. And don't be afraid to try. Listen to that voice and that nudge of the Holy Spirit to where God is calling us 507 more years into the future. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.